E, uh, listen, what did you want for your birthday this year? I want a go-kart. What else? I want Robux. Hmm. What else? I want V-Bux. Hmm. What else? I want Minecraft Realms. What else? I want a pit bull. Your wish is my command. Oop, there's a pit bull. What hey. else? <laughs> Well, can I have a new TV stand? A TV stand? Yeah. And so I ordered a TV stand. Uh, and here it is. It's a uh, TV stand for TVs up to 50 inches. It has that uh, sliding barn door. And it's a rustic brown color. Unpacking the box is actually a bit of a chore. It's uh, packed rather tightly and uh, securely. But these are all the pieces. As you can see, they're all labeled with numbers. Now these labels are stickers, so hopefully they don't fall off. The hardware is labeled uh, with letters. It comes with a manual. The metal pieces I found did not have labels on the pieces themselves. It was on the plastic cover. So don't take the plastic covers off just yet. Or you may not uh, immediately know which number is associated with which of the metal bars. So, to begin putting this thing together, uh, we'll find the board that's uh, labeled with a number one. And we're going to put these uh, studs in. Now the studs are in the bag labeled A. And we'll be putting them in uh, here in these spots. They don't give you any sort of Phillips head screwdriver, so you'll have to have your own. I suggest one with a ratchet on it. It makes it easier to screw these in. I would not use an electric screwdriver and I would also not use your super strength. These uh, boards are particle boards. They're not uh, real wood. And particle boards, while they're strong, um, they do have a reputation for e being easily stripped. So if you use your super strength on these, you could strip them, and that would be a problem. So tighten them down snugly. Just kind of tighten them down. You don't have to crank them. Just snugly tighten them in and uh, you're good to go. After we get these in, we're going to uh, pull the two of the metal bars. Um, they're labeled uh, 18 and 19 on the plastic wrapper, but if you remove the plastic wrapper like I did, uh, just look at these bars. Now, the instructions are not terribly clear on which direction these go, but um, I was able to pretty much figure it out that you want uh, these to go flush against board number one. Flush. Now, you could flip them around so they're not flush, but that would not work in the end. Um, so, 
just do it like I'm showing you here and then round up your bag uh, labeled E and pull some of these wood screws out you're gonna need six of them actually to fasten those bars uh, as I'm showing you here again no super strength <laughs> if you torque these down and strip it it's not good you'll be having to give them a call and ask you to send another board or something like that and it's better to just do it right it doesn't have to be cranked down just tighten it snugly That said, it fits uh, pretty good. I mean, you can see it's engineered well. Um, it matches the length properly. Uh, and everything lines up nicely. So you gotta like that. Let's finish tightening down both sides here. And once we finish uh, making sure those are snugly tightened in, we're going to be finding uh, the next two boards. So uh, the next two boards are uh, six and seven. And these guys each have a groove in it. Now, the number six, they have a little line on the bottom of it, so you can tell it's a six. And that's an interesting to note as we move along later, you'll see. But uh, so six and seven, I uh, set them down like uh, I have them there. And uh, get ready to start putting studs in here. Um, put them in exactly in the spots that I'm showing you. Again, no super strength. Don't strip these. Just tighten them down. Snug. So, I mentioned the six and the line that's under it so you can tell it's a six right because if there was no line under it it could be a nine if you flipped it around well the next board is in fact the nine board this board right here but they have the line under it for the six so it's still six right they should have put the line under the opposite side uh, to make it a nine. Needless to say, they're very different looking, so it's easy to spot the nine board. Uh, it's the only board like it. Uh, so we'll set that down next to six and seven there with uh, those big circle sides facing up. And then we're going to round up a, the N board, a uh, uh, iron like metal thing with the studs sticking out of it. <clears throat> this is actually the railing for the barn doors and it's going to go into that nine board. Now the studs don't fit in the holes but they do line up with the holes and you're going to end up using um, the screws from the D bag four screws from the D bag. These are black screws. They're like metal screws. Uh, and they go right into that metal railing. Now, uh, these screws here are not Phillips heads. They're actually Allen wrench screws. Now, they give you an Allen wrench, which you can use, or I use a fitting uh, for my ratchet screwdriver instead it's much easier but uh, use what you have available use what they give you or use your own and then tighten it down now you can actually crank this <clears throat> because it's metal on metal again though if you use your super strength you could crush the 
particle board if you just torque it way too much but you do have a little bit more flexibility to use some strength because again it's metal pulling on metal uh, you do want to tighten these down reasonably well as the it's the rail that the barn doors will be sliding on you certainly don't want that falling off so we're then uh, going to want to put uh, studs in here basically uh, right along where the um, screws that hold the rail are now these studs are going into the uh, number nine board in the two spots that I'm showing you Uh, so once we get those in, we're going to want to get the two board out and put a couple of these little guide studs uh, into the side of the two board, uh, just as where I'm showing you. So after putting these little guide studs in, we're going to put number nine board uh, where the studs are up to the two board exactly like I'm showing you and after that uh, we get these little lock things don't know what they're called really lock nuts <laughs> not really uh, anyway, we're going to get these two deals here, and you just put them in and spin it halfway. Uh, use a pretty large Phillips head to get a grip on it. Again, do not use your super strength. These can strip. So halfway, just tighten it. It works. If you use your super strength and strip it, it you know it weakens it. Not a good plan. Afterwards, let's get a couple more studs and put it on the uh, two board in the positions here that I'm showing you. Again, don't crank these down. Uh, but once you finish putting those studs in, move the two board out of the way. And... Um, and hunt down the eight board. Now my eight board has some scuffs on it. Not sure what happened there. But not too big a deal. Probably will clean up. Anyway, set the eight board in between the six and the seven board that you already were working on. Now the six and the seven board have the studs already in it. <coughs> And now you want to put a couple of little guide studs in between those metal studs. So you want uh, it lined up like this. Put that little groove that I just showed you in the back on the bottom. And then slide the six board into the eight board just like this. It's important you do it this way uh, because the finished parts uh, have to be in the correct uh, on the correct side so after you do that uh, you want to get the seven board put the stud the guide studs in the seven board and also slide it into the eight board so now you have a tie fighter or at least it looks like a tie fighter and uh, just be patient pushing this in it, 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 it's well engineered it fits perfectly I had no problems whatsoever getting it together there after you get those together, you're going to secure it with these uh, little lock spinner deals. Again, don't crank them, just turn them halfway. If you, you know, just don't crank them down. You don't want to hear that kind of splintery sound of stripping it. So uh, once we get this fastened in, we're going to hunt down the three board. 
Now the three board has like this little plastic guide, which is the bottom of the barn doors will go into that guide there. Now mine had a little piece of the plastic broken off and I was a little concerned about that, but it turned out not to be a big deal. <clears throat> uh, the little plastic guides uh, on the barn doors didn't really affect it. Or actually didn't affect it at all. So we're going to put our TIE Fighter uh, 6, 7, and 8 on this board here, but you're going to want to put some guide studs in just exactly like I'm showing you. And uh, then you're going to have to put some metal studs in in these spots next to the guide studs. Can't say it enough, just tighten them down snug, don't use your super strength. Uh, after we get those in, you're going to get the TIE Fighter, <laughs> 6, 7, and 8. And, uh, and it's going to fit right on top of those studs you put in three. Very cool, right? And like I said, it's engineered pretty well. It fits pretty much perfectly. Uh, and then you're going to lock it down with your little lock nut things. Your spinner McSpinners. Um, which, again, you don't want to torque down until a break. So... Uh, looks like we're in good shape here. After we're done fastening the TIE Fighter uh, to uh, that board, uh, we're going to go get uh, the number two board that has uh, the railing on it. But uh, first, you're going to put some guide studs in the uh, top of that TIE Fighter like I showed you there. <clears throat> now, on the number two board with uh, the railing, it's going to slide on top uh, just like this. So you have to be patient and put those studs in there properly. Just line it up. It does fit very well, it's, it, but you, you do need to be patient and make sure it's lined up and then just merely slide it in. After getting it set on top there, you're going to get a couple more of these lock uh, nuts and fasten two uh, to the rest of the unit. And once uh, we're done fastening that, we're going to be looking for the number 10 boards. And these are small, very similar looking boards. Actually, they are the same, uh, just like I'm showing you. And then we're going to put a couple of guide studs in the top of the number two board, exactly like this. And then break out some metal studs that we're going to screw into the top of uh, the two board. Again, be careful not to torque these down too much. Snug them in. And then we're going to put the, the uh, 10 boards on. Now make sure the finished part of these boards are facing the railing, the front. There's an unfinished side and a finished side. Make sure to put it in exactly like this so you're going to have unfinished 
part of that board facing the front. It's going to look like crap. Uh, once you get them in there, just uh, secure them with the lock nuts. And we're good to go. So we're going to get a couple more of those little guide studs and put them in the top of the uh, uh, 10 board. After we get those stuck in there, we're going to round up the number one board, which is the first board we were fooling with. <clears throat> Flip it over so those metal studs are down. And uh, we're going to line it up with the unit. And uh, put it on there just like this. Again, uh, just be patient when you set it on there. It's uh, It fits perfectly. Again, it's very easy. Uh, it just lays right on there. And then uh, get your lock nuts and secure it. Just as you've done with the other pieces. So after we're done securing this, um, we're going to get the metal frames and uh, boards four and five. So boards four and five are the side boards and uh, you're going to want to set them down so all the holes and stuff are facing up. And then bring uh, the metal frames over because you're going to be fastening those with the E screws, the screws from the E bag. These are those wood screws. Now these metal frames uh, go exactly like this and they're going to be flush with four and five. Uh, exactly like I'm showing you. again, you could put this the other way and they won't be flush and it won't look right. So, um, just do it exactly like you can see there. And then put the wood screws from the e-bag uh, in there. And again, uh, tighten them snug, but don't go to town with your super strength and strip them. Just uh, fasten them down. You know, so they're pretty good. If you, if you snug them down, they're in there pretty secure. If you torque it down with your super strength and strip it, it won't be secure at all. So just snug it and it'll sit just fine. So... You know, while you're doing this, you kind of notice there's an awful lot of holes on this. Uh, that's because these are the, you know, the outside panels of the unit. And the holes here are actually going to be facing in. So you're going to be putting guide studs and studs all in here. Uh, and it looks like an awful lot of holes and you don't know which one are studs and so forth. I'm going to help you with that. So let's break out the metal studs and, uh, and then just put the metal studs in the holes that I'm showing you. And to be honest with you, the guide stud holes are slightly larger, uh, so it would be difficult to do it anyway, but uh, you know, just put put these in the correct holes. It won't really work uh, if you don't. But uh, you know, just follow this pattern either in the instructions or here in the video, and make sure you get it in the proper holes. Again, 
snug them in there. Don't super torque them in. And after we get all these in, there is quite a few of them, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be ready or bring them over to the unit itself uh, to fasten it to the unit. Uh, so we're going to need a few of those little wood guide studs that we'll put into the side of the unit. Uh, but you may, uh, you know, have to figure out how exactly these go because once you put the frames, the metal frames on the side boards there, you can no longer see what numbers they are. <laughs> but I've got good news for you. Uh, it only goes one way. Um, you can see how this does not work putting it on the wrong way just doesn't work you can't do it uh, so you can see there's like a little arm there and how it matches up <clears throat> and make sure of course the legs which are the extended metal parts are uh, on the the bottom plastic so anyway I put the wood studs in uh, exactly in this or the wood guide studs in the spots that I'm showing you here and then uh, basically just lift it up and again it's it's well engineered it, it slides right in you might have to kind of tap it in a little bit but it fits pretty good in there and uh, what we'll do once we get that into place is uh, go over to the other side and put the guide studs in there and slide the other side on too. Now this is kind of an important part coming up and the instructions uh, uh, kind of missed it but uh, we'll go over it in pretty good detail here to uh, you know avoid any miscommunications because it's a little scary when something's missing from the instructions um, but uh, anyway once we get this in everything's all good there uh, what we're going to want to do is uh, begin putting fasteners on there so there's these corner pieces that are nice metal and uh, there's two for each corners and uh, you're gonna want to uh, get the screw from the L bag to uh, put these on and I just hand tightened it in the beginning to make sure everything fit properly and I put it on each side here and like I said I just hand tightened it while before I put any of those little lock nuts on uh, and it's I'm gonna now show you why so these metal bars labeled 20 on the bag uh, there's no reference to them in the instructions so you know you, you just these here go on the bottom and uh, you know you, you can see where the screws go in and I'm going to show you how you put them on again using the L screws Uh, and then you just line it up exactly like this. And again, I hand tightened it in just to make sure everything fit properly. Hey.
hand tighten both sides in and we're good to go I actually used the Allen wrench because it was handy and I kind of tightened it down a bit there before I put the uh, lock nuts on uh, and then you pretty much just got to go through and start putting these lock nuts in uh, there's quite a few of the uh, empty holes that you have to find and put these in to make sure you secure uh, the boards you put them in and then of course tighten down uh, the corners try to do it as evenly as possible and uh, I would double check make sure you're not missing any of the lock nuts there's a lot of them around uh, just check every corner <laughs> and make sure you didn't miss one. Afterwards, flip uh, the unit upside down and put the other 20 bar. Again, no reference to it in the instructions. I mean, it's in the list of materials, but there's nothing in the instructions about putting this in. That said, it's pretty, you know, easy to see in the picture where it's supposed to go. Um, you know, in, in the diagram for step seven, uh, you can see that it was supposed to go there. They just don't have it labeled at all. That's all right. We got it situated. And, and uh, make sure you put the lock nuts on the bottom panel and as well while you have it upside down. I can see folks not watching this video that might struggle with that part right there though wondering what the heck is going on uh, they'll probably figure it out but you know it is what it is anyway and flip it you know the opposite direction so you can put the corner pieces in um, and you know there's really no need to just hand tighten at this point because the other pieces are in just crank it down it's metal on metal, but I still want to use your super strength. Just tighten it pretty good. Um, you could probably tighten it a little bit more than the, the stuff going into the particle board. And uh, after we get those corner pieces tightened down, we've got a couple more of these um, lock uh, nut pieces that you can find and again I would double check and make sure you're not missing any of these there is a lot of these around and they're very important for the uh, you know the stability of the unit that they're all there so now we're going to flip it to the back side and this is where you put the uh, back pieces now some of the units have just like little nails that you nail in and and stuff this one has wood screws which is fine <clears throat> um, you know use your common sense here and how you want to do it everybody's going to do it different probably uh, this is how I did it um, the picture and in the instruction shows that there's holes along the metal uh, railing side pieces there's no holes there's no way to fasten the back piece to the metal that I had uh, but it didn't matter because there's plenty of other spots to fasten it uh, to and the the wood screws are actually you know pretty good at holding it in it's almost like a little puzzle so I did these top pieces first uh, and kind of guided them together and made sure it, it was proper and then I did the middle piece because some of the screws double and hold two pieces on uh, so 
Uh, you can basically see the pattern I did to make sure uh, that this covered the back properly. What you want to be careful about here is um, not screwing it sideways so that a screw actually comes out of one of the boards. <laughs> it, it doesn't look good. But um, I didn't have any problems with it. I just put it in straight and made sure. Now on these side ones, I did it. I left it out a little so I could slide the other panels in and basically kill two birds with one stone. Once you slide the other panels in, you can tighten it and it secures two panels uh, from that position. See how I slide it in? It's going to slide in and now I tighten those screws down and it will actually secure both panels there. And you'll see it has little grooves just to do it that way. And it's actually pretty decent quality uh, compared to some units, like the cheaper units are uh, basically paper, the back pieces. Uh, while these are not wood, they are like thin particle boards uh, and they're much more secure than uh, some of the uh, cardboard backs that I've seen. Um, so when I, you know, once I was done putting all the pieces in, it seemed like it was pretty nice. Um, I mean, not that people were going to be looking at the back. And by the way, both sides of it are, are finished. So, you know, just put it how you like. But uh, this is how I did it. And, uh, you know, just kind of think it through. Maybe put them down first. And there it is. Uh, so now these here are going to be the shelves. What number of these guys are number 11? And the shelves come with these little pegs, which are these nice little metal pegs. Real nice material, whatever metal that is. It seemed like it was tungsten or aluminum. <laughs> anyway, uh, you can put them in any hole you want. Just make sure they're even. And then when you put the shelf in, you see that groove in the back? That groove has to go in the back, not the front the back and it, it goes around one of the metal frames in the back there so we're going to do both sides uh, putting the shelves in again the groove goes in the back and then afterwards we're going to be winding this down by working on the, the barn doors the sliding barn doors yay finally winding down there we go so here's the front barn doors and to begin with this deal here they have these uh, I don't know what these are called uh, they're like they're the guide plates listen there's two sides on these guide plates one side is kind of rough and one side is finished uh, make sure you put the rough side down and the finished side up uh, it fits better and it looks nicer, but you don't see them anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But it does fit better if you do it that way. Uh, these are supposed to be adjustable, you know, so that you, you know if you need you want it to be deeper into the track, you can lower it, raise it. I just sort of tightened it down how it fit because it fit fine. Just tighten down. Uh, once you get them in, you just basically put the the door in the slide on the bottom there and set it there to hold it in place uh, and oh this is where you know a broken plastic piece I was a little concerned about but it didn't uh, affect it so you can see it's still slit just fine there um, so anyway I just put those in and now the hangers with the roller things <laughs> pulleys uh, we're going to install these next and you basically just lay it on top of the rail and put the screws uh, from the D bag, D is in delta bag, uh, to fasten it to the door and then you get those nuts uh, and from the G bag and I hand tighten these on. And it's pretty nice. I mean, this is not cheap material uh, at all. And again, well engineered. It's not, uh, 
I mean, it fits perfectly. And you gotta like that. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm sitting here doing the audio and I see the holes in the, the, uh, the metal railing so that would have should have gone on the back piece now I can see that and that's where the back wood would go so don't make the mistake I made of putting those with those little holes on the front it's probably too late you already did it like I did it <laughs> doesn't matter anyway so then you <laughs> tighten these things down and uh, and we're good to go. There it is. Yeah, you see the holes on that front metal bar? That's for the fittings for the back thing. So the, it could have gone either way there. It's all right. Still looks really good. Uh, they don't give you those little caps that you stick in there to cover the those lock uh, uh, nuts. So... That's the only thing that's kind of missing. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. It's a pretty solid little piece of furniture. Listen, guys and gals, uh, I hope this helped you. If it did, uh, give me a thumbs up. Until next time.